Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to continue our Absolute Monarch lectures with Peter the Great. I don't know if last class I said Henry VIII because I thought Henry VIII was next, but apparently he's not. Peter the Great is next. Um, so we'll do Henry VIII next class. But let's talk about Peter the Great. So he lived from 1672 to 1725. Um, very similar to Louis the Fourteenth, he's going to inherit the throne at the young age um, a little bit older, older than Louis. He's going to inherit at 10, whereas Louis was 5, yes. Um, so he is going to inherit the Russian throne. Um, and he's going to have to deal with a lot of issues. People not wanting to uh, have him as king, trying to usurp him and take his power. Um and not really having the best of regents. Uh, he'll survive several assassination attempts uh, until he takes full control at age 17. And right there is where you're going to see that big difference between Peter the Great and Louis XIV. Um, one is there to have fun, and the other is there to rule uh, and make his country uh, the best it can be. Um... Peter the Great himself was an imposing figure. Um, there's lots of rumors about how tall he might have been, um, but the historical understanding is that he was exceptionally tall for not just the time period, just just very tall. Um, you see um, arguments he range, ranged anywhere from 6'4 uh, to 6'10. We go with 6'8 as just an average. Um, but either way, when the average person uh, was 5'8 or less, that's a very imposing figure. Um, and that kind of embodies who he is. He is imposing. Um, you notice him very quickly in a crowd, uh, and his ruling style um, mimics that. So when he is younger, uh, he does not stay in Russia. He will actually be sent west. Um, to study as well as to avoid assassination attempts. Uh, he's going to go to Germany. He's going to do a lot of studying there. He'll also stop in Italy, um, which, if you remember, at that time, the Renaissance is happening, uh, and you have this time period in, in Western Europe of um, open thought and it, major advancement, and that simply didn't happen in Russia. Um, Russia was still in the Middle Ages essentially, when, when Peter took over. So he kind of likens um, that advancement that the Renaissance had with uh, how people acted. So when he comes back to Russia and he gains full control, he tries to push it forward by westernizing um, Russia. Oh, it says Europe in there. Oh. I just changed it on my screen, but you... Can I flip it? Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, I didn't even spell Russia right. There you go. Fix that. Okay. Um. So there's a lot of different ways he does it, and again, it, it kind of shows what type of a ruler he was. Um. So the big one, the, the one that um, people like to talk about as a historical fun fact is dealing with beards. So in Russia, men wore these big, long, heavy beards. It was considered a sign of manliness, and also it kept your face warm in Russia, which is cold. Um, but when Peter the Great goes west, you know what he doesn't see? Beards. He'll see mustaches, he'll see goatees, but he marks that, um, that full beard really seemed to be... Um, like a commoner type of thing where you couldn't afford to shave. Uh, so he says that all Russian men have to cut off their beards. And then being Russian, they they say, no, we're not doing that. I mean, I've had a beard my entire life. And my father had a beard and his father before him and his father before them and his mother before him. Did you get it? Huh. Um, but uh, Peter is, is not going to take that... Uh, well, so uh, he basically calls nobles to the uh, the castle, and he says, I told you to shave your beard. Um, y you can shave it, or I'm going to shave it for you. And there's actually um, documents of him shaving the nobles. Um, 
uh, basically grabbing them by the face and taking out a straight razor and ch cutting out chunks of their faces um, as well as ripping out the beards. Uh, he was a little unstable. But really you only have to... Uh, I mean, well, we say it's unstable because it's very violent, but if you're looking at it from an absolute modern perspective, you really only have to do that once or twice before everyone's like, okay, uh, we'll shave our beards. Um, you do see him working with uh, the nobles, however, when his advisors bring forth another plan and they say, what if we let them keep their beards, but they have to pay a tax? Um, and Peter was fine with that. He said, yeah, as long as if they're going to pay a tax because what he really wanted to do was advance his country. So if it meant he was going to get more money, he was willing to um, let that be. Uh, and, and that's really where you start to see some of a difference again between um, Peter and Louis XIV because uh, Peter the Great, um, everything he does will be horrible in some aspect but he does it for the benefit of his country. Um, there's actually a term for it, uh, enlightened despot. Um, so this is an authoritarian ruler who does everything they do to make their country better. It's not about how they feel or what they want for themselves. It's what they think is best for the country. They can still be horrible people and do horrible things, but the purpose is there uh, to make the country better, not just for themselves. <laughs> Um, so some other crazy things he does to Western R Russia. Uh, he is going to get women involved in the royal court. So back then in Russia, men and women were not allowed to interact in public together, particularly nobles. So it was literally like um, a man and a woman. So a husband and a wife would go to the royal court. They would um, go to the doors and the husband would drop the, his wife off in the women's uh, parlor or where all the women were. And then he would go to the men's side and he would have his whatever discussions they were. And then he would pick her up at the end of the night and they would go home. But they couldn't talk to each other and they didn't talk to people of other genders. So him forcing women to be involved in the court uh, is actually very interesting because it meant that women had to be listened to within the court. Um, but it also meant for those high class women, they saw it as an affront to their nobility because um, men talking to women in public is something a commoner would do. Um, and they had been raised their entire life and very well instructed on how they're supposed to act when they are outside of their home. And then all of a sudden, the king is telling them they have to act differently. Okay. Uh, so you can imagine that these type of things will make the nobles unhappy. Um, and that's when we see um, the full measure of Peter the Great's power. Uh, you, he'll have a couple of rebellions happening, including one where a thousand nobles, okay, a thousand nobles will join together to attack Peter the Great to storm his castle because they were going to overthrow him. And they did not succeed. Uh, Peter the Great had his army slaughter all of them. And then he refused to allow their family members to pick up their bodies. Instead, he had all of the corpses impaled outside of his castle. So that if you were to approach his castle, you would see the remains of all those who had stood before him and failed. Um, you see this uh, mimicked a lot in television shows. And people say, wow, that's crazy. No, that's Peter the Great. Okay. Um, so uh, very ruthless. Uh, and he really understood what it meant to have a show uh, and how they do. Which, again, is another interesting comparison between Louis XIV, where Louis XIV does his show by having nobles um, basically uh, help him get dressed in the morning. Uh, whereas Peter the Great shows his strength, and it's all about showing his strength um, through the heads of his enemies. Um, so other ways that he uh, tried to push his country forward, once he had that full hold of his country and everyone was afraid to rebel, he pushed uh, forward several efforts. Um, he expanded Russia's borders uh, to include uh, massive territory, he really wanted to expand south 
to get a warm water port. They had control over the Arctic ports, but not down by the Black Sea. Um, and he knew if he could get a warm water port uh, where ships can sail in and out at all times of the year, not just when um, the ice hasn't frozen everything, that would massively improve their trade. Unfortunately, um, he is not going to be able to do that. Uh, it will not happen in his lifetime. His um, later descendants will get it done. Catherine the Great will get that warm water port. Um, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have uh, land expansion that isn't very famous. He will build St. Petersburg. Um, and you could say it's named after him, but it's named after St. Peter. Um, and it becomes the summer home of the monarchs. So during the summer, they would stay in St. Petersburg. Um, when it was nice out. No, wait, that's not right. It's the winter home. It's the winter home. I'm fixing that too. I'm a little overwhelmed this week. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so it's the winter home of the monarchs. Um, much better weather to stay in, and then the rest of the the summer they would send in Moscow. At least I think that's right. Um, either way, it's a very pretty city. Um, there we go. Where's my pictures? Yeah, I'll show you again. Is anyone actually watching these? I hope so. This takes a lot of time. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Sorry. That was loud. Um, like I already explained what Enlightened Despot was. Um, so he does a lot for his country. He really tries to force his country into modern times, and he does in many ways, but he does it through very brutal methods. Um, he was um, rash and unbearable. I think he actually beat one of his sons to death. Or he beat him very badly, and then he died. Yeah, he did. He did. One of his sons. Alexander? Alexei? Some, but he had others. Um, so, uh, he's not a good person. Uh, as an individual, as a king, he was very ruthless, but he did push um, the country forward. Obviously, the people living in that time uh, would not have uh, enjoyed being part of Peter the Great, but... Like all absolute monarchs, if he liked you, you were very lucky and you, you got a lot of benefit from it um, with castles and titles and money. So, he's an interesting fellow. Um, Russia's interesting in the types of people they produce. Um, like I said, Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, Ivan the Terrible. Interesting monarchs um, who all stand out in their own ways. So, feel free to look stuff up if you like learning about this stuff. All right, so that's it for today. Your assignment is super easy. Please just do it. All I want you to do is uh, basically list different things that Peter the Great did that would make him uh, considered an absolute monarch. And yes, you can do a bulleted list. Um, so it's called Peter the Great Nomination. I give you a little setup as to what is the purpose of writing it, but you're, you're basically reviewing what Peter the Great did. So anything from this lecture, if you do look up stuff because you're interested in learning more, please just put down where you looked. Even if it's Wikipedia, just give me the link. Okay? All right. So next class, Henry VIII. I hope you have a good day.